Welcome to the Raspberry Pi Workshop Tutorials, brought to you by ModMyPi, BuyAPi.ca, and PyShop.us. In this series of videos, we'll demonstrate nine projects that could be made using the YouTube Workshop Kit for Raspberry Pi. These projects are a great way to familiarize yourself with the Pi's input and output functions, as well as creating programs in Python that we'll use to control the Pi's hardware. In this sixth tutorial, SOS Buzzer, we'll add sound output to our Raspberry Pi, as well as continuing to work with user inputs and loops. The output pin that we'll be using for the buzzer is GPIO22. It's located right next door to the first two outputs that we used for our LEDs, making it pin 8 down from the top in the left row. Our wiring diagram is showing an orange wire, but I only have green. So let's connect the green wire to GPIO 22 on the board. Now we'll select a slot on the breadboard. I'm going to use row 19. And we'll get ready to put in our buzzer. Note that our buzzer is a little bit different than the one shown in the diagram, and the two legs are different lengths. We'll use the longer leg first because it's indicating the positive side, and place it in the breadboard. To complete the circuit, we'll use a black jumper to go from the negative leg of the buzzer over to the ground rail. Let's plug in the Raspberry Pi, boot it up, and begin creating our code. Open the command terminal and change directories into our GPIO code folder. Remember to press tab to autocomplete your file names and then enter. Using nano, create the file name 6 underscore morse code dot py. Copy and paste your code in from whichever source you're using. Having pasted in our code, let's take a closer look. As always, we begin with the same Python interpreter declaration. And we're using the same OS library, time library, and GPIO library that we've used a few times in a row now. We're still using the BCM pin numbering system, which we'll use through all the tutorials. And this time we're using pin 22 for our output to the buzzer. We need a variable to keep track of how many times the buzzer sounds. So we'll use loop underscore count and we'll set the initial value to zero. Here in section five, we're going to start using a function for the first time. A function is a reusable block of code that you can call to from multiple places in your program without having to rewrite the same long content for that code block. Let's zoom out a little bit to look at the entire function. The function in section 5 includes all of this code. It begins with a comment just describing that this is going to be a function. And you initiate a function by using the def define command and then the function name and then the open and close brackets and colon. After that, remember to indent all of your code so that it's evident what is part of the function. Our function includes a series of high, low, and sleep commands to create sounds that are going to be three quick dots, three long dashes, and then three quick dots again down at the bottom. To create each beep with our buzzer, we need a high, and then a sleep, and then a low, and then a sleep, just like we did with our LEDs. That will create a single tone with a space after it. Notice that the sleep interval is 0.1 seconds for the short dots, and is 0.2 seconds for the longer dashes. After we've created the Morse code function, we'll use the clear screen command and we'll print 
The title of the program, Morse code on the screen for the user. We'll then ask the user, how many times would you like the SOS program to loop? And we'll feed the response from that into the loop count variable. Now that the Morse code function is defined and we know how many times the loop is supposed to run, we can use the same while loop structure that we used before to run it as many times as necessary. Each time that the loop count variable is greater than zero, we'll enter the loop, remove one from the counter, and call the Morse code function by using its name and then the open and close brackets. Press Ctrl X to exit, Y for yes, and enter to save to this file name. To test the program, let's type sudo python and then the file name 6 underscore morsecode.py. Let's loop it twice. Sounds good. Thank you for watching, and please follow us on social media for more Pi projects and resources.